week we travel to the south of Johannesburg where a remarkable battle is taking place. Ten years into democracy, black and white South Africans are fighting each other for a roof over their heads. It's a war between the poorest of the poor, hidden from the view of those picking the fruits of democracy. In Johannesburg, there is war between the haves and the have-nots. This is the battlefield, the city's housing for the poor, so-called council flats. On the one side, white families who've been living here for decades. On the other, black families who are moving in, sometimes illegally and forcibly. There's a waiting list of 190,000 families desperate for shelter. These are the council flats in Chrisville, southern Johannesburg. City residents who earn less than 3,500 rand a month can qualify for one. Before 1994, only poor whites lived here, like Piet van der Berg. He stayed here all his life. In the beginning, it was fantastic to stay here. The area was nice, the lawn was green. You know, the council used to cut the lawn, clean the place up. But about two, three years, two years ago, they don't, they're not interested in cleaning up here. Everything is messy, dirty. All these lights, there were lights here, poles with lights. How much light is nice? It looks nice, you know, like a park. All of a sudden, there's no more poles, there's no more lights. All the copper wires, everything is gone. The coming of democracy has also changed the face of Johannesburg's council flats. Black families started moving in. Some were allocated flats by the council. Others simply took them over. That's what happened to Piet van der neighbor, Bobby Klesia. One day he found his flat occupied by a black family. Oh, poor Bobby. He stayed with his mother. He looked after his mother. Oh, they did. He cared for her. He was a very nice son to care for his mother that day. Then she died. He stayed on in the flat. So he went on construction work. When he came back, his flat was empty. Bobby thought the death of his mother was his ultimate loss. Then he also lost his home. He now stays with neighbors. All he has left is his identity document and a few pictures he found in a bin outside his flat. Bobby left his flat unattended to go and work in Botswana. When he came back, there were strangers in his home. They refused to leave or to give back his furniture and appliances. So I came back from Botswana to find out they didn't even have a flat, let alone that they had taken everything and what they didn't want, they sold or otherwise threw out. This is the woman who took Bobby's flat, Runita Williams. She was allegedly assisted by a gangster in the area who helped her break into the flat. It took police three days to arrive and up to this day, their investigation has yielded nothing. People around here are calling them for, you know, that I moved in here by four, by, you know, by breaking in and I never broke into the flat. They broke your house open with crowbars and all that. And unfortunately, I saw it. You see? And those people looked at me and they saw my face. And the next moment, they chasing me with bricks and they start throwing me. And ever since, my life in this place was hell. Whenever they see me, they ask to me. Death certificates, birth certificates, lost wills and testimonies, um, anything of major, major uh, interest in that has all been thrown out. I've just removed it outside because I don't need this furniture. There was actually nothing else. Because the way they love, they really love like pigs. Huh? I think there's quite a bit of stuff in there that they do use that belongs to us. And as I say, I don't want to go there and say it's my stuff because I know at the end of the day they're going to wait for me on a quiet night or something. You know, I don't really want to get involved too much. I don't think they feel anything for anybody else. As long as they can get what they want, a flat to stay in, then they, want. they don't worry, they don't care about the next person. I'm looking for a place for myself and my daughter. We women. Life is dangerous outside. They don't pay rent. They don't pay water and light. They just moved in. We call, I call them aliens. White people, they used to have a good life. That's all I can say. And now I think it's our time to have a good and a better life. 
in this new South Africa. And we come to think that we've lost literally everything. Right? The only thing close, close to it was becoming a hobo. I do understand that I am illegal here, yeah, but I am not going to move out because I'm registered with the council. They have to drag me out here or kill me before I move out of this place. After the break, self-appointed housing committees. Bittering Court in Bella Vista, south of Johannesburg. These two are council flats. All whites have already moved out. The building is badly in need of repair, so most residents now refuse to pay the 150 rand monthly rental. <coughs> For seven years, this is my daily bread. I used to every day I must do the same thing. Every day. Tenants believe that the council is neglecting the building because there are no more whites living here. The last time that rusting pipes and broken geezers were fixed was seven years ago. I don't have money to fix. If somebody can help me to fix, I'll appreciate it. So anything that is internal is the responsibility of a tenant, and anything that is external is our responsibility. Residents in this 15-storey building say they can't remember the last time the lifts were working. Our intention is to renovate. If the engineer says no, you cannot be repaired, then we we'll look at the relocation. Not far from Citrine Court lives another white resident, Anna Weber. She claims she's been evicted by a black family, who then moved in. DA councillor Bev Turk says she witnesses these illegal evictions on a daily basis. Some stuff was taken up. He was moving what? to my oldest son in Pretoria. And then they thought I'm moving and they started moving their car couches in my house. They started moving all their furniture in my house. And you saw a whole lot of them came through. Yeah, a whole lot. Hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, part of the this is the self-appointed Bella Vista <laughs> Housing Committee. According to Anna, they <laughs> evicted her. <laughs> she moved out on her own. Serious. Uh, you can ask anybody here. Nobody can put a person out of your house if, you, if, uh, if you're legal here. Nobody can put and there was a truck. And there was a truck, a big truck. Now, how can it be? A big truck putting That's a furniture fine. in. That's fine. That's fine, even though the truck was there, it was my son that was moving, wasn't it? He moved out of here to his to his oldest brother, and then this lady came and she said, if I don't be out, they will dance and they will set my place alive. And she says, even if I don't move out, she will sleep in my front yard, but they will be in your room. But can't you, is, they isn't this flat legally yours? Wasn't it legally yours? Yes, yes. So, 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 so why did you take this stuff from I wasn't moving, moving, it wasn't me, it was my son. Now, if they moving. put you out, why did you leave this flat? I was alone, and my son. Now, why that's didn't you call the How many times did why I Why didn't you call the police? I was afraid. If somebody put you out of your house, you've got a right, you've got papers. Go to the police. Because you've got papers. That's the truth. Yeah. Poison Easiest one, two, three. So your information, the police were yeah. I don't uh, have to tell you anything. When we came here, it wasn't a son, a daughter still spoke to us. Huh? They called the cops, the cops came and the daughter took out rent slips saying that she oh. bought this place and they never bought this place. Most people aren't in the committee, in the committee. But I really think they slowly wrote it in white people out there and that's just it. I was so afraid I didn't know what to do. I thought the best is to just get out, just get away. Because it was about a sack of 30, 40 colored women standing there. And they were all carrying on and laughing and uh, it made me frightened. Everything was on the truck when we came here. It was empty. Nobody put you out. Do you guys know the woman that's staying in there? This no. was, yes, she's one of our committee. She comes from Petrinko. She was staying in a salty place. It was underwater and she got a baby. Now these people, when they move, they put in their own people. Like maybe I was saying there, now I moved and I put my sister in. Instead of taking the kids back to council because they are people, that are in need of better places. What must I do? Am I getting a pension? I can't stay for my kids. Then I'm a little bit here, then I'm a little bit there. This place I've been staying here over 12 years. And I was staying quite nice here. I had kids here. All my next door neighbors, I never had trouble with them. And now, what must I do now? I uh, think white people are moving out on their own. 
committee members claim they're the council's eyes and ears. Tonight, the committee is meeting the South Region Council to discuss evictions in the area. We as a committee have to fight against those people, putting in illegal people in the place um, that's not even on council's waiting list to be allocated to anyone. Who is doing that? There are people that um, never even applied for a council property. That is living in a council property right now. Uh, as we are talking, because why they've been held by this illegal committee. This person was evicted by these elements. She had a lease and everything for the place. And uh, guns were shown, people were threatened with guns not to move into that place and police had to be called in and they did nothing. The police did nothing to alleviate that problem. They must bring proof, right? Uh, they must stop talking. Council cannot take action where people just talk without a proof. The application itself, the identity documents from this person, the form C, they sold this place to someone else and put someone else into this property, uh, preventing Mr. Haberi from moving into the property. It is a, a criminal offense because you cannot take council properties and you sell them. So if people move out, the community w are able to assist us and to say that unit is empty and then you can go back into the waiting list to find out who is the next person who's going to occupy it. You know, there was nothing in the flat. So it seems to me that the people must be removing. And this woman wants to put someone else into this flat. Uh, then I told the lady that she must wait, we must lock the doors, and rather go to the general manager, Mr. Masalpi himself, to see what's happening with this flat and what is the story, because they cannot put anyone else or allocate this flat to anyone else. The council waiting list is up to date. Yeah. And then there's nobody. Uh, council can allocate a unit without a waiting list. There is no waiting list. According to Central, the region does it. According to Region 9, Central does it. So you're pushed and you cannot get anything out of either person. Apart from councillors who are trying to demand a waiting list, and they don't realise that a waiting list it's a confidential document. Right? I don't think uh, anybody, you, without giving any permission, you can go and peruse my document. It was not council who allocated Renisa Williams a council flat. She moved in illegally, like many others in the area. Today, the community is going to the mayor's public meeting in South Hills. They hope that their problems will be sorted out, among them the lack of housing, poor maintenance, and the dilapidated state of council flats. There are about 36,000 council flats and houses in Johannesburg alone. A few weeks from, from today, we'll be celebrating 10 years of freedom and democracy. We only need to think about what South Africa was to appreciate where we are. But for the fact that the two of you can't do that well by showing land and the media and the media and so on. Government is really responsible for two things. One is service delivery. The other is, is to play a role as an economic role player. Our housing situation in this area it is one of the biggest problems that ever, ever occurred in South Africa. 
But not everybody was unhappy. Some felt that the council was indeed looking after them. It had given them a roof over their heads. Because today I'm staying with them in this area. So I come and say thank you to my government. Because before there was not those opportunities. If it was the Arundi, if it was not to find their head yet, head yet, head yet, it can be happened. Oh my God! What is head yet for me, head After the break, two families in one flat. This is Glen Esk in the south of Johannesburg. Heather van Amarva and her two boys have been staying here all their lives. They shared a flat with a friend. Three years ago, Heather's friend moved out and she took over the flat. She applied to the council to have the flat transferred to her name and was put on the waiting list. Tell me please, mommy. We want a nice place. Please let us fix up our flat because I think it's their flat. And uh, please, mommy, we want our room. So we can't just fix the place up. We want to do it so really out of our house. We want to fix up this place. We don't want to stay like this. But we both don't know really whose place this really is. As Heather waited for the council to deal with her application, she unexpectedly got a flatmate. Dorothy Masinga arrived one day and claimed the council had given the place to her. It's not my place, actually, because I don't know where I'm standing right now. They can chase me out or they can just stay. Or I must start from the beginning paying rent from all over, from that, that year until this year. Now we're all living together and it is, there's no privacy. It's not nice to look like we all live in one room, me and my children. Both Dorothy and Heather are illegal and don't pay rent. Their electricity and water were cut off three years ago. Dorothy uses a paraffin stove. It's stinking. Every morning I must wake up, open the windows. I can't open the door because it's a problem for the other people. It's going to stink. Heather, however, has made another plan. She gets electricity from her neighbors at 50 rand a week. We're battling a lot because a man that needs to stay to live here, he owes about 33,000 for his water and light. He just left me with that ball and uh, they have to go and ask people if we can have a ball. Our children, because I have to attend school, clean every day. I just Really not nice, <laughs> Heather says she cannot afford to rent private property on her husband's meager salary. Three is by the gate. 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 If you illegally occupy the unit, you must enter into a formal rental agreement with council. You must make a commitment in terms of payment of arrears. At that point, you are regularized. You then have a right to apply for ownership of the unit that you are occupying. I won't move. I'm not going to say as what. I must of my clear gaan for like many other white tenants, Heather believed that the council favours black people. I think it is because I'm white, because why else? What, what can the reason be why wouldn't they put this place on my name? I mean, I was here first, and all my papers is handed in, but nothing has been done yet. As we sit right now, we have on our waiting list, just for rental, access and rental units, we have 190,000 families, only for rental stock, registered with us. Across the street in Glenesk, the community has had enough. They've decided for the first time to march in protest, to force the council to address their problems and fears. Heather decides to join them. 
The marchers come from all over Johannesburg and gather in front of library gardens in central Johannesburg. They await the arrival of the mayor to force him to listen to their grievances over the lack of housing, rates, electricity cutoffs, and the billing system. It is regrettable that after 10 years of democracy, and the government with an open door policy that we have to resort to mass action to try and resolve serious problems facing thousands of citizens. It is election time. That is a message to all the politicians that we voted in. You are not doing anything for our people, yet you want our vote. Sort out our problems before we go and vote. Back at Glenet, Julene Rustoff fears that she'll soon be without a roof over her head. Two years ago, police evicted her from the council house she was occupying illegally. She moved to this one, which she rents for 500 rand a month. But the owner wants more, and she can't afford it. It was in the morning. I was on my way out, and I saw the police come up in the street. And when I went back to the house, they were busy throwing out all the furniture. They didn't tell me who they were. They didn't tell us later to say they were from the court or from the council. They just threw out all the furniture and blocked the door. There are rules and regulations. Leases are signed or should be signed. In your lease, it gives you 30 days, written notice, either way. So there's no way that you can just come in and walk into somebody's house and say, come. Move, move, move. It's your treaty then, for you. Because I, I went to the council, I am on the way to list. With the imminent uh, democratization uh, of South Africa just before uh, 1994, uh, blacks, both African and colored in, in particular, moved into the area, um, creating a situation whereby with limited stock, we've got more people uh, that scramble for uh, the limited resources being the council-owned stock. Yes, if I was black, the council would give me the fire. Because there was a flat in in South Hill, they gave it to a black lady. When I went to apply for a South same flat, they gave it to her. She's not even on the waiting list. We are trying to ensure that where opportunities arise, with some of the flags, uh, uh, Africans should also benefit. Um, and the, it is being interpreted as if that is uh, chasing white away. This is the original house Jolene stayed in. It was allocated to a black family. They spent two years renovating it with no one actually staying there. I'm angry I passed that house because we didn't stay there for two years. When we had to battle for the place to stay, we had place to stay, and we were thrown out. All we want to ask the council is to give us place to stay. That's all we want. So Johannesburg, we are like a magnet, and that is why our waiting list in terms of rent house keeps growing. Poverty knows no color. And you know what? White people are very poor. We've got some very, very poor white people who've always been poor. At the moment, my dream is just to get the house and I can take the same. That's all I want. Is a roof over my children here. Thank you.